Shato, very nice to meet you. My name's David from HeyYouGuys.co.uk. Um, first question, I think, how did you get involved in the project? Uh, I was promoting District 9, and I was in my hotel room in Austin, Texas, and I had got a call, I think, the day before about it, just saying that they were interested in me meeting with Joe Conahan, the director. So I uh, and also received the script, um, and I'd read the script, and I felt that the way that Murdoch was written in the script was not close enough for me to the original Murdoch. So I shot some scenes in my hotel room that I improvised. I called it Things That Could Happen to Murdoch in a Hotel Room. And I sent them to Joe Conahan before I met him because I thought, well, once he watches this, he'll know, he'll have a set. He'll either say, yes, come and meet me, or no, don't, you know. <laughs> and luckily from, from that, he, he loved it and said, yeah, this is what I want to do with the character. Go mad, Excellent. so to speak. Yeah, definitely. And did you ever have any inkling that, you know, when you were growing up, did, obviously I'm assuming you were a fan of the A-Team, but did you ever think you could play a character in the, in the film? Um, no, I mean, that was never even a vague possibility. Just the idea of even that there would be movies based on TV shows even at that time didn't, didn't cross my mind. But I used to, I mean, I played A-Team. I had an A-Team gang when I was 12 years old at school. I, um, and I grew up doing voices and accents and things that were similar to Murdoch, I guess, in some ways. So. Who did you play in the gang at school? I was actually Hannibal Wait. because I needed, yeah, Murdoch and B.A. were my two favorites. Um, overall, but I needed to be Hannibal to be the boss of the gang. That was the, my problem was I was very bossy. I would have been Murdoch if I could have been the boss of the gang. Hmm. But I remember having this dilemma in my little like 11 or 12 year old mind going, ah, if I'm Murdoch, then I can't be the boss. And theoretically, I can't really form the gang. I can't decide what we're going to do. Hmm. So yeah, and I how, was the boss in the end. That's good. How did you feel when you got the part? I was, uh, I was happy. I, I, I really felt that it was just something that I felt very right with, you know, very comfortable with. And um, I cut short the D9 tour, actually. I was in France. I, was, I think we were at the Deauville Film Festival when, when they called me. So it was, it was just something that felt right. That's cool. And how did you feel working with the other people? So like Liam Neeson's obviously mm. uh, was a megastar, and mm. no offence, but before District 9, mm. people didn't really know who you were, mm. and then that was such a massive success. How did it feel going into Hollywood and working with these other established actors? Um, I mean, the interesting thing was just actually seeing the scale of the production. That was amazing. Um, and in terms of the other actors, it was it was... It was interesting for me, I guess, I learned quite a lot about more in getting to know them all, the kind of things they deal with as actors in life, you know, in the industry. I have a, my very own specific opinion on film and on acting styles and all of that. I'm, I'm, so I, I tend to kind of, I'm a little bit in my own head almost in a way. <laughs> it's kind of like the way that Murdoch is. Yeah. Um, but it was an amazing experience getting to know them and, and getting to hear first hand from people how they did you know the kind of things they have to deal with and things that they'd experienced and it was very very helpful for me mm. and what, what i guess you learned an awful lot from district nine that could then help you in with with uh with the a-team film as well. yeah i mean i had made movies as as a as a producer director i'd made i'd acted a lot actually when i was a kid from like 10 to about 19 years old I made little movies with my buddies, and so I had, I definitely had an ex a, a sense of what filmmaking was even before I did District 9. Mm. So there wasn't really um, anything specific that, uh, you know, some sort of any sort of epiphanies or anything I had on District 9. I'd, I'd been working in the industry as such for, for quite a long time. Uh, before I made that film, yeah, actually. Yeah. Okay. And was there any stunts in the A-Team that, um, one that you remember that stick out as being completely ridiculous and you can't believe you did it, but were there any that were so ridiculous they got cut from the film? Um, as in physical stunts? Well, and, and either no, or, but, or, but, but definitely me singing sexy back to Jessica Biel in a take, <laughs> like when she didn't know that I was going to do it <laughs> and she's trying to stay in character, so I said, be all strict with me. Okay. You know, it was that scene where Murdoch's sitting in the asylum and he's like acting like he's all uh, comatose. Yeah, yeah. Uh, every take I would do something different with, with, with Jessica. So she never knew what I was going to go for. And on one take I pretended that she was like me, the stripper, you know, that one of the guys had like sent the stripper. And then when she didn't respond I jumped up and I started stripping down and doing my best Justin Timberlake impression. 
They cut that out. It didn't make the final cut. No, that oh. didn't make it. Maybe it's in the deleted scene. I thought it was remember. funny. Yeah, no, it sounds <laughs> I good thought to it me. Was good. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. So did Jessica, actually, eventually. She held character for about 10 seconds and then she, then she laughed. And then I've got a theory that uh-huh. Howling Mad Murdoch isn't actually that mad because in the scene, which I won't spoil for the people that are watching this that haven't seen the film yet, where um, there's the big reveal of the Arab and you find out who that is, mm-hmm. you're the one that's talking the most sense in that scene. And I wondered what you thought about deeper into Howling Mad Murdoch's character, whether or not you think he is actually insane or if that's just, a, that's just his personality and he's eccentric. Well, first, thanks very much for saying you think he was talking the most sense. I did. This is actually becoming quickly one of my favourite interviews that I've done on the tour. Because <laughs> I definitely think he speaks a hell of a lot of sense a lot of the time. Uh, but secondly, I took exactly the same approach that Stephen J. Cannell and Dwight Schultz did with the original show, which was that it's never decided whether he's completely crazy or whether he's acting crazy just to avoid trouble mm-hmm. and getting put in jail, or whether it's a little bit of both. Uh, and they never resolved that in the, in the TV show, and we didn't resolve it here either. What do you so. think your personal opinion is? I have my own person, but I'm keeping it. <laughs> okay. uh, when can we expect a sequel to the film? Is there, is there any talk of that? I don't know. I haven't heard. I think they wait until all of this stuff gets, gets done, and I'm, I haven't heard anything. Yeah, and what about District 10? Is there any news on that? Uh, no, Neil's working on another movie at, at the moment, and so his head's down on, on that. And you're doing Men in Black 3 at the moment? I am not yet, uh, and I don't know if I'm going to. We, we, it's one of those stories that broke prematurely. Same thing happened okay. to me on I'm Number 4. <laughs> this wasn't even as far down the road as I'm Number 4. We're still, we're still talking about it on both sides, so it, it actually isn't confirmed yet. Okay, yeah. um, but would you like to do that as well if you could, I guess? It seems, it seems interesting. It seems like a good role, but there's a few things. They, they're making some changes right now. They're like working out a few more things with the character, and in the script there's some script changes going on, so I'm still waiting to, for them to come back and see what the final... Uh, script is going to be okay. Were there any sort of favourite episodes that you liked that stuck out in your mind? Um, not not episodes. Although I then rewatched the show, uh, most of the episodes while I was filming, I was watching a lot of them in my trailer. It's one of the great things about a big budget Hollywood movie. You get a lot of you know, nice big screen TV in the trailer. And, um, I watched a bunch, but I would say the thing that really stuck in my mind always was the relationship between B.A. and Murdoch. Mm-hmm. I really loved that. That was probably my favorite. Any time those two guys, you know, the love-hate thing. And yeah, yeah. Rampage and I really wanted to capture that. We were the two biggest fans of the show, I think, of almost anyone involved. Uh, and we, we tried, wherever we got a chance, we, we would throw that stuff in. Yeah. Uh, and that's one of the things that I really remember and, and loved about it. How did you feel when the, uh, the 18 van got demolished? Not, not, not great. Not, not, uh, not, not over the, not over the moon. But I was, I was, you know, I, I was more into the characters in the original show. I know some guys are like crazy about the van. I was, I was, more, I was really upset. You know it. what I mean? Yeah, that's the thing. Like I wasn't one of those types of fans who really, who really was obsessed about the van. I was obsessed about the characters. I had the characters, the little action figures. I had the A-Team dossier book that you got with all the cards, the mm-hmm. trading cards. You remember those trading yeah, cards? Do, yeah, yeah, yeah. I filled my sticker whole book. Sticker albums the as sticker well. Album, yeah. I filled my whole book up. So I was more, you know, if one of the characters had died, you would have had a, I would have had a problem. But the van, I was like, okay. And, and how did it's it going to come back. Yeah, you know? is it going to you know come I mean? back? Cause like, I was it would have to come back. I okay, mean, as good. a fan, I'm like, I can't, how can it not come back? Good, good. They actually had an ending. Um, God, I don't know if I'm allowed to tell you, but they actually had originally, it was planned that uh, B.A. was going to get given a van again right. by a relative of his, and I won't say who that was mm-hmm. going to be. Uh, but at, at the end, and I think they ran out of time or something and, and decided not to shoot that. Yeah, there's actually an 18 van outside now that I've seen. Have you seen it out there? No, I haven't. Oh, there seen is one there now. Really. Do you know Rampage there. is buying an 18 van? Is he really? He's, he's having one made in Los Angeles, and he says, When I move to America, I can share the ownership of the van with him. Excellent. How did it, last question How did it feel when you first went into the 18 van and you were part of the 18? It was very surreal, man. Uh, it was awesome, you know, but it was really one of those experiences. And I think I had it even more like looking at the posters and kind of seeing my face was kind of Murdoch on. Mm. It was a really surreal, very humbling process because you kind of know you could never have made that happen. But I had so much love for that show and it represented such a time in my youth and to, to uh, you know, find myself in the movie. That's why, for me, I really wanted to do this character in a way that 
Dwight would like, which he did, and in a way that I as a fan would feel like I'd done justice as much as I could to that original character. Yeah. I, I really wanted to stick it quite closely to the original version because yeah. I loved it so much. You did a fantastic job and I oh, love the Blu-ray DVD and so oh, cool. uh, thank you so much for your time today. Thanks a lot, man. Cheers. Thanks for having me.